Uh, this is a joint work uh, with uh, Stony Brook uh, University and UIC. So we all use uh, browser extensions, and browser extensions are uh, really popular since they extend uh, the user capabilities and functionalities over the browser. Various extensions are focused on simple tasks, uh, such as annotating emails or sorting email addresses, while others um, focus on more sophisticated tasks, such as VPN services and uh, ad block services. Also recently, since uh, the crypto transactions are really popular and have been like uh, skyrocketed, um, there are a lot of uh, extensions that are focusing on the uh, crypto wallets and blockchain transactions. So even if extensions are practical and more or less we all like them, they are not as benign as expected. They introduce a new fingerprinting uh, vector of uh, attacks and can be used for tracking. So specifically, arbitrary websites can detect uh, <coughs> the user extensions, the, the extensions that the user has installed the browser, and fingerprint the user accordingly. To make matters worse, there are no specific permissions required to fingerprint them or to not fingerprint them. And also, if attackers are focused on specific uh, sensitive ex extensions, such as health or religion, they can infer information about the user. Prior research in uh, this area revealed and proposed multiple side channel inference attacks that can be employed to fingerprint extensions. The first and the most uh, simple attack includes the web accessible resources, where an attacker probes the website uh, to look for a specific uh, extension related resources. An attacker can also infer the presence or absence of uh, extensions by identifying the side channel effects of uh, their execution, such as the modifications that they introduce on the page or the style modifications. So even if uh, those techniques are powerful, uh, the only limitation is that they fingerprint the extensions in a passive way. This means that they read the DOM or any other properties of uh, the website after a predefined threshold and detect the presence or absence of specific elements. However, extensions are highly dynamic and can be triggered through various ways. So extensions are complex and um, multidimensional entities by their nature and by their design. This means that they might expect specific user interactions in order to get triggered. For example, think the Google Translate uh, extension. When you install it, it doesn't perform many modifications on the page. It doesn't do anything on the page. But when you click on a term and you highlight an element, a new pop-up appears and um, it, it offers the translation or the annotation of the text. So now the question that arises here is how user interactions affect the fingerprintability of extensions and how can we fingerprint the extensions that are triggered through user interactions? So for our work, we assume the following thread model. We assume that the user visits a malicious website that fingerprints extensions. The user performs uh, a set of user interactions and based on uh, the modifications that they are introduced by those interactions, uh, the website is able to fingerprint uh, the extensions of the user and their devices accordingly. So to study this uh, tracking paradigm, uh, we designed a methodology which is based on two phases. In the first phase, we perform different kinds of analysis and generate the user interaction templates, while on the second phase, we exercise the extensions accordingly and generate the fingerprints. Let's uh, focus more on the preparatory phase and see uh, the, uh, the different components. So at this phase, the input is a set of extensions that we process and uh, extract information. So at first, we perform a very simple but uh, effective step, and we parse the manifest file and extract all the permissions and the structure entries that will help us understand the type of interaction that uh, the extension requires. For example, if an extension contains a context menu item, uh, it is very likely that it will require a right-click action in order to get uh, triggered. We extract all the required uh, permissions and entry elements for each extension and store them accordingly. Uh, in the next step, we perform static analysis on each extension's content script to identify all the user-driven uh, capabilities and events. We focus on the event listener function since it uh, indicates the user interactions required to trigger a modification. If an event listener waits for a click or for a scroll event, it is very likely that uh, they will perform a modification after this event. So we extract all the, um, all the related arguments and all, all these values, and we categorize them based on the functionality. Having all the data from uh, the previous stage, here we combine it and design the user interaction templates that represent all the interactions that the user can perform either on the page or on the extension itself. 
we define three templates that are formed by both generic and more exclusive actions. So in the first category, we include all the um, actions related to the browser interface. Uh, this template stores uh, simple actions, such as click on the extension icon, and more complicated interactions like click on the extension icon, interact with a pop-up page, or with a configuration page. Uh, the second category of uh, the most events, uh, as expected, uh, includes the highest number of uh, interactions. Since we want to be as extensive as uh, possible, here we include all the user interactions that can be form, uh, performed uh, with uh, the mouse. For example, a user can click uh, the page, can highlight a term, can right-click a term, can scroll, and all such kind of interactions. In the next... Um, the, the next uh, template follows a similar pattern, and we define all the keyboard uh, interactions that the user can perform through the keyboard, either simple actions or, again, more complicated. Now let's move to the extension exercising phase, where we exercise its extension and generate the fingerprint. So a fundamental component uh, for, um, for our system uh, is the honey page. The Honey page is a page that we control, and we use it to exercise all the extensions. So we used Carnos, uh, the state-of-the-art um, Honey page, and we extended it by including uh, interactive elements such as form, dynamic elements, drop-down lists, and also content from uh, popular uh, languages. We used this Honey page to exercise the extension and perform all the required uh, interactions uh, from our system. So now regarding the, the exercising, since we know the structure of its uh, extension and which actions will potentially trigger them, we exercise them according to that principle. To cover as many actions as possible, we apply the mouse and the keyboard events in every uh, action template, while we also include any other specialized actions, such as the right-clicking or the browser, uh, the browser interactions. Now, in order to generate the, the fingerprint, we install the extension and visit the Honey page, and we apply each action uh, individually. After each action, we log the DOM and look for uh, specific modifications, while we also log all the messages sent uh, from uh, the extension to the page, and also all the resources loaded. Each uh, extension fingerprint uh, uh, contains the action that triggered uh, a modification and also fine-grained uh, information regarding the modification itself. So now let's move on to the, uh, to the evaluation. Uh, to evaluate our system, we used three different data sets representing uh, three different snapshots of the extension store. As we can see, our system is able to fingerprint uh, almost 5,500 extensions across uh, three different data sets. So in more detail, uh, we found out that almost 90% uh, of the extensions were triggered by the simple action of clicking the extension uh, icon, while uh, for the extension requiring mouse events, the highlight term and the right click were uh, the actions that triggered the highest number of extensions. Um, similarly, for the keyboard interactions, we found out that the single keystroke and the two key combination were also uh, relatively popular. In general, uh, these numbers give credence uh, to our system design and methodology since they verify that uh, we are able to uh, effectively replicate the user interactions and trigger a high number of extensions. To also gain more insights regarding uh, the detecting extension type, we categorize them uh, based on the category as it's stored on the extension store. As you can see, productivity is the most popular uh, category across the three data sets, followed by uh, fun and developer tools, while we also have other categories where not uh, as popular. Um, we refer to the paper for different kinds of analysis and for, for more extensive analysis on the, uh, these results. So another critical dimension of uh, the user interactions is that they can be artificially simulated through the code. So the JavaScript API can replicate all the mouse and the keyboard interactions from simple clicks and scrolls to the page to more complicated mouse movements and uh, keyboard combination events. We can use this, uh, this API to replicate uh, all the user interactions uh, from inside the page, from the code, without the need of uh, the user actually interacting uh, with the page. However, it's not uh, as simple because uh, browsers protect these kinds of events and include the specific read-only property on every uh, triggered event. If an event comes from um, the user, it is flagged as true, 
if it's uh, from the code, if it's a script event, it's, it's flagged as false. So even if this property is available on every event that is uh, triggered uh, through the browser, we verify that developers do not really use this information. So in summary, our proposed attack uh, employs this API and is able to leverage all the user interactions to trick extensions to believe that the users actually uh, interacted uh, with uh, the page. Uh, to trigger an action is not straightforward, it's not very simple. Since we have to trigger a chain of interactions and multiple event listeners might be involved. For example, to select a term on the page, we have to move we have to perform all the mouse movements to this term, click the term, write, uh, highlight the term, etc. So we found out that uh, almost 70% of the extensions are vulnerable to this attack, while extensions requiring mouse events are more exposed to this attack compared to the keyboard events. Also, we evaluated uh, how practical uh, is our attack, um, and we verified that it's really practical because we can trigger 20 extensions in less than a half a second. So this means that our attack can be really easily scaled, and if an attacker targets a high number of extensions or specific subsets of uh, extensions, uh, they will be able to trigger them in a few seconds. Now I'm going to show you a demonstration of our attack. So at first we install two extensions, and we visit the attacker's page. So when we visit the attacker's page, uh, the page emulates uh, the keyboard events. And as you can see here, uh, the first extension was triggered. And obviously, the, the attack is stealthy. We don't see the keyboard uh, interactions. And similarly, uh, I mean, it's slightly visible here that it was like a mouse over and a select term that uh, was triggered. Similarly, we trigger the, um, the, uh, the mouse interactions. So in practice, of course, we can make the attack more stealthy, and we can hide more elements. But this was just uh, for uh, um, the demo purposes. So in general, uh, in, in conclusion, uh, we presented a novel extension fingerprinting vector that employs user interactions to uh, fingerprint extensions. While we also evaluated the user-triggered extension fingerprinting, it detected a high number of hidden by the previous method extensions. Um, on parallel, we demonstrated the lack of security checks by triggering extensions through artificial actions. And finally, we proposed a countermeasure for automatic operation of safeguards in the extensions code. And you can find more information in the paper. Um, thank you for your time. Any questions?